He's hiding a secret in his house. We both just read this issue of the House of Secrets, number uh, 118 from 1974. Super modern. It's, uh, it's it was a few fan. years after he was born. <laughs> no, um, so House of Secrets has three, this issue has three stories in it. Um, each better than the last. <laughs> each a short horror story that with a twist ending. I tried to put that in quotes. Twist ending. Um, oh, was that? I think that's the concept, right? Twist oh, endings. well, they... Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm going to spoil the stories. Um, oh, we, we have to talk through this. You can't nod. Well, so, just to skip to the ending in the first story, that was a twist ending. I... Because you thought he was... the The people who were going to show the movie revealing the truth of his murder well, didn't get there to show the movie but the movie showed anyway so that was the twist so the the start of this story is dr lansing has arrived in hollywood and after 35 years there's a film of him killing someone 35 years ago even though it should have been like 34 you, you work it out oh okay I didn't think about that but <laughs> killing the person who was better at writing scripts than him so to steal one of his scripts and steal his girlfriend he killed him somehow even without the guy's script writing skills he became a big star in Hollywood and right. produced directed and starred in his own well because he killed everyone better than him apparently ah, by killing oh, okay. that one guy <laughs> so um, so then it turns out that his lawyer and his wife found out or put the pieces together 35 years later and are making him think he's being haunted by um, his ex-partner who he killed but um, but he overhears them so he knows that they're doing this trick on him but then in the theater at the big premiere for his movie a movie shows that shows him killing his partner which we think is a movie put together by the wife and lawyer right but then in a twist, it turns out they weren't able to get into the movie theater on time, and so they were not the ones who showed... They did not show the movie that they made that showed that he was a killer. So it was just a ghost movie. Yes. And a ghost killed him by strangling him with film. I think it's supposed to be like an Edgar Allan... A modern Edgar Allan Poe story. It's a little lacking like in that. Like the Telltale Heart or something. <laughs> The Telltale movie. Yeah, well, there's also a scene in here of him taking some woman and throwing her under a guillotine and then pulling it. And, oh, it's a trick guillotine. What a macabre right. sense of humor. I think that was his wife, who was the right. stolen girlfriend. And I, it, it didn't need to be in there. It's just, oh, he's creepy but he does these horror movies so. well i think that that was supposed to be the beat that shows that how bad he is to his wife which makes his wife want to get start investigating oh, things okay so it's i think a, that's supposed to add to her hair. motivation okay i uh <clears throat> but uh but the connection was weak i admit okay what nice. did you think of the artwork oh um not much <laughs> I like, like it's fine I just didn't think much of it like it, it was fine it. it served the story uh -huh. it's an older comic so I don't think to do it I actually noticed the lettering a bit more though like you get more sound effects or the clapping they have this clap 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 like a horse is trotting by but just that sort of thing just reminds me of it being a comic like just felt comic-y and cool for that I kind of liked the art. I liked the art in all three stories in here. Maybe this one was the least good, but I still liked it. The artist was named George Evans. But it points at... Well, this only old people, old comic book readers will know, but it seemed like a few panels to me were drawn by Mike Plug. I don't know if Mike Plug and George Evans had a similar style or if I'm actually spotting some panels where someone else helped him finish it. Um... This one seemed totally like a Mike Plug panel to me at the bottom there. Anyway, that's just obscure. But should we move on to the next story, or where do you have other thoughts? No, the next story is fine. All four pages of it. 
Right, so the first one was called The Very Last Picture Show. And I bet in the early 70s was where the movie The Last Picture Show came out. So they were trying to make a clever connection there, although plot-wise I think there was no connection to The Last Picture Show. Yeah, but I mean, I got the idea, like, the last movie, right. you know, and it's his last movie. and Okay. And the next story is called Turnabout, and it's by written by Steve Skates, Skeets, and art by Guico Redondo. There used to be someone named Nestor Redondo, and I wonder if this is Nestor Redondo, but using a different name. I don't know. That's what, yeah. the, what the art looks like. So this was what a four-page story about a woman who murdered her husband. Right, she murders the husband, throws him in the trunk, and then all of a sudden she's driving. She she pulls up to the river yeah. where she's going to dump the body. The body's not there. And then the ghost of the husband comes up. <laughs> yeah, the ghost of the husband does a lot of laughing. <laughs> Two panels, <laughs> three actually. Oh, I'm you're right. And then Blanc. <laughs> And then Blanc. So someone hits her on the back of the head. It, well, it's the car hitting her on the back of the head like she backed into it, I guess. Oh. I didn't even Because guess she's that. so afraid of the Good ghost. point. The laughing makes her bonk her head on the trunk of the car and, and then fall in. And then she's off on the river in the car. <clears throat> so she wakes up in the dark and then she realizes she's in a pool of water. And this is what I really love. I love the way this is drawn because it's drawn... In this weird way, she realizes she's in the trunk, but we just sort of see her in the dark in this puddle. Did you like that? And then the head being there, so you get this like the big ghost. Presence. Oh, the ghost comes back with ah ha ha, more laughing for three, four more panels. So he laughs through half of this comic. <laughs> yes, he's a very happy ghost, <laughs> having been cheated on his wife, rubbed her nose in it, and then killed by her. He's pretty happy about it. <laughs> No comment on marriage at all <laughs> in this comic. Um, Steve Skates was uh, a happily married fellow, I'm sure. And so uh, she cracks out at the last second only to say, I'm free, and she's on a waterfall. And this last word balloon by her moderator. Or narrator. Narrator. Is it Kane or Abel? I Is think it's really Kane. Is it really a narrator? I think it's Abel. It's Abel. Is it really a narrator? They're though? the hosts of these. Each of these yeah, horror it, magazines had a host who would say a few words at the beginning of the story and then at the end. Sometimes in the older ones they would have a whole page with Cain or Abel. He feels less like a narrator and more yeah, like a presenter of a right. show. And He's so, the, like the host, yeah. Like Vampira or something presenting movies. And so he he says, laughing? Yes, no comment to the guy who's been laughing this entire comic. Perhaps you believe that Donald's husband was having the last laugh, but no. He was not laughing, but we was. saw him laugh That's all a lot. he does. <laughs> For no matter where he's lying along the highway, having fallen out of the trunk perhaps, no matter where, he was nonetheless quite dead as his wife would soon be. So I guess they're saying once his wife was back in the picture, he wouldn't be happy? No, we're, <laughs> he, he's emphasizing that both of them are now dead. Oh, yeah. That's all he's really doing in oh, a kind oh. of convoluted, badly written way. Oh, I was thinking when she's dead, then they'd be ghosts together and he'd be miserable because oh. he was with her again. <laughs> Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Could that, be. I, that's why I got. I don't know, but it was awkwardly written. That that bubble was awkwardly written for sure. Yeah. The. Um, I mean, I think all of, to me, all of these are like trying to be like Edgar Allan Poe. And Edgar Allan Poe stories are really quite simple, but it's mood and tone that make them scary, at least at a certain age. Yeah, I can see that. You know, like the cask of, um, um, Mateo, I never had to know. Um, Amadeus, Amadeus. That one is about a guy who's just talking to his friend, leads him down to a um, room where they keep wine, and then he bricks him in, yeah. in the room, and that's the end of the story. Which doesn't, that never made sense because he can't brick that quickly. Right. Did he did poison him so that he was pa yeah. paralyzed or something? Well, even then, though, I mean, that's a few hours. If he bricked him in that quickly, right. this man is a master of his craft, so... Anyway. So they're they're actually trying to do something that's probably very hard, you know, in terms of writing very short, scary stories. Oh, it, it's no short, it's no small <clears throat> feat. But these and are, so it depends on the artist to create a mood, and I thought this artist did a good job of that with the whole way he shot the interior. Yes. Of the trunk of the car. The strongest of the three in that aspect, I feel. And uh, 
And I like that they leave it at the end. You know she's going to go over the edge of the waterfall, but they don't feel they have to show that or anything. I, I could have seen a little... <laughs> well, yeah, that would have been a, a way to do it. But. Okay, well, um, I think I enjoyed all of this more than Matt did. The last one probably had the weakest writing. The nasty little man. I thought it was hilarious. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was uh, written by Jack Olek, a familiar name, but I'm not sure who he was. And art by Ramona Frandon, who was a Golden Age artist, one of the few women to do comic book art in the Golden Age. And I've seen like little bits of stuff she did at Marvel. She just did a very small amount of Marvel, like some fill-in Fantastic Four issues and stuff. But I haven't seen much of her art before. Well, I, I took it in here, as, as it was, I guess, so. Dude. And uh, this page, just this opening shot of the table here, <clears throat> is just this come hither. Like, it just made no... I just thought that I was I thought that amazing. was great. It made it... It set the funny tone... Yeah, that's and it, true. it made fun. It kind of, while having our host present things, just made it, it's not just a guy standing there or ahead. He's he's up in a tree, lounging about and pointing down at our story. I yeah, that was cool, personally. Yeah. <coughs> well, and you have this. So a guy who's I guess it's during one of those famines in Ireland, and he finds a leprechaun. He's starving, and he finds a leprechaun. Patrick Terrence. And his name's Patrick Terrence, and he's a horrible person, but also happens well, to be starving. I think it's funny. They say he's a horrible person, but he's upset because they're eating bark soup. I'd be upset if I right. was eating bark soup. And then he's mad that other people are living in these grand stone houses while he's living in a mud right. hut. I think he has a valid complaint. Right. He's just a I working see. man who's like, why it says the world's unfair. Yeah, though we don't see him working. We don't see anyone working. He never worked. And then he catches a leprechaun. Which is and, hard work. And threatens... Right, that was impressive that he could catch it. And threatens to squeeze it to death unless it gives him a wish. So it grants his wish to be to go live in the manor, basically. Well, yeah, and so by, he... Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, he, he's there. And then so the way he gets his wish to be well-fed and live in this house is this woman stumbles and he holds he catches her falling from her horse he catches the horse really he doesn't oh, really okay. catch her at well, least into the picture horse people, catching is a I good mean, skill you tell me yeah. so maybe he calms the horse down although it looks like she falls off of it anyway so that's kind of ironic yeah but she, he saved her life somehow there with her and, crazy uh, eyes and after a while we realize she's been magically caused to fall in love with him so no matter what a jerk he is she still loves him right so right. that's what the leprechaun did but I mean, she loves him, but I guess he doesn't love her. But I mean, initially, you know, she brings him in. He becomes well fed, and then he's living in this house. But there he is, being well fed and living in the house, and pushing the serving staff around very cruelly. Up until this point, there's nothing really that bad about him. I don't think. I mean, yeah, he threatened to kill the leprechaun, but I, isn't that what you're supposed to do? I forget how it works. I don't know how. Uh, I don't know if you have to threaten to kill the leprechaun or not. It but, seems Irish. But he's Northern Irish. then he's rude to the servants, and and we're told he lies about loving her too. I yeah, but we've all been there. But the magic of the leprechaun, I think, both makes her fall in love with him and makes her father somehow think he's a good match for his daughter. Right. Even though he has nothing and but, is and has white hair, he looks old. <laughs> But then he oh, she has white hair too. That's weird. Wax the father in the face with this um, horse hoof on a stick to make it look like the horse <laughs> punched him in the face. I guess stomped him on the face. I would assume. Which, sure, I, apparently he's very clever with this gambit. Right. I I thought that was pretty funny. I don't know. And then the twist, or one of the twists, is when the father dies. It turns out he didn't have that much money. And Which they, makes no sense. They have to sell the manor. I think if they wrote it better, I think the idea is he, he, was, he had uh, accrued all this debt against the manor, and now they have to sell it off to pay off oh. the debt. But they didn't actually okay. put that in the story, but that was the way I read between the lines there. That makes sense. So then he and his wife... Oh, here's a lovely picture of his wife when he's being mean to her. 
But um, then he and his wife have to look, move into some hovel of a hut. And right. Eat bark soup again, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and then, she, and then he gets very angry with her and calls her names that I was kind of surprised we could get in there. He can afford to get drunk, although he can't afford good food. So well, he gets really drunk that's... and slaps her around, but she still loves him. So she gets a pair of scissors and stabs him in the back as part of her love for him. Right, because then he, when he's in the cemetery, he's able to live in a stone house and he'll never be hungry again, which... Right, the stone, stone sepulture or whatever you call those things. I don't know, I thought that was very <laughs> caring. Right, so, um, yeah, it ends... <laughs> Ends with him dead, his father-in-law dead, and his wife in the madhouse. Right. And Which, so that was the clever twist, that he would never be hungry again because he was dead, I guess. But she's supposed to be in the jail, and because of that I thought it would have been maybe a little bit of a better twist if she had put him in jail. So he'd be living in a stone house, and they'd right. feed him so he'd never That's be hungry true. again. But every one of these stories has to end in death. Oh, Preferably death of everybody, and if not death of everybody, at least ma the madhouse. Okay, well. So, okay. in some weird way, I enjoy. I know these weren't like up to the Edgar Allan Poe ness that they would oh, like to be. Well, I mean. But I enjoyed them, even no, though they were kind of crude in their plot. They're fun and quirky in a way, but the, the brevity of them, I think, is maybe their strength. Uh -huh. Because they don't, nothing's dragged out. You know, when right. you're telling a comic story in four pages, right. there's something there. And if it's a complete story, yeah. there's... Uh, wow. And for me, even, you know, if it's only four pages, even if there's just like one really cool page, that kind of... That's part of why I like the four-page one, maybe the most. <sighs> I think the four-page one was probably the strongest, though I did find a lot of enjoyment in the Cruel Husband one just because it was so quirky and weird. Well, I, I loved the Ramona Friend in art, so I really enjoyed just reading it for the art. It didn't hit me any different than the other two. Really? really. Oh, they it seemed in a different style to me. You have a better eye for that. Or a different me, eye. A different eye. Well, this sort of thing, like... I don't have the palette developed for uh -huh. it, so it all just... Like, I don't have the same. palette for Udon. Well, that should all look the same, though. <laughs> well, to me, the, the, the Ramona Frandon looked very different than the others, and it, and it had a, a very pleasing style that I haven't really seen much of, even in old or new reading. I also read the statement of postal ownership or whatever it is they have to put in once a year oh, in comics. I skipped that. And uh, it turns out that the circulation on this comic was 160000 a month. Oh, they had to... That's cool. I know they had to print that. Yeah. So you could... Once a year you could find out what... But not only that... I'm going to have to take my glasses off to look at the fine print, which is embarrassing, but... Um, they have to tell you how many copies they print and how many they sell. So... They printed 330,000 copies and they sold 160,000. Huh. So pretty much a 50% 50, 50 sell-through. Um, Is that good? or It seems like it would be bad. I think that was what they aimed for. Wow. So uh, on one hand, comics sold a lot back then, but they had to print a lot more to sell that many. Interesting. So it's hard to know what their profit margins were. I sometimes wonder if a comic selling 50,000 copies now, where there's no lost, you know, where they sold every single copy, maybe they make more money. Well, you know they, where they have the answers for that? Uh, Bleeding Cool? In the House, house of, of Secrets. secrets. Ooh. 